Welcome back to CBS News. Let's turn now to the humanitarian and political crisis unfolding in Haiti. Today, the Caribbean country finds itself without a single elected government official. Earlier this week, the terms of the last 10 remaining senators officially expired. The country has been in turmoil since the assassination of President Jovenel Moise back in 2021. And it faces a number of catastrophes that range from food shortages to gang violence and economic collapse. So joining us now to discuss is award-winning journalist Gary Pierre Pierre. He is the founder and publisher of the Haitian Times. Uh, Gary, always good to see you, um, but not under circumstances like this. Can you describe for our viewers what the situation is right now in Haiti? Well, thanks for having me, Vlad and Anne-Marie. What's happening in Haiti right now is yet another uh, development of the crisis that has gripped the country since the assassination of Jovenel Moise, as you mentioned. And so with no uh, functioning government, um, we are on uncharted territory. We are approaching constitutional chaos. And so as the gangs and, and, and other bad actors continue uh, their reign of terror on the population, that can't seem to catch a break. So what does that mean, though, for ordinary, regular Haitians day to day? I mean, with no functioning government, are you know government employees being paid? What's the electricity like? Do people have access to food? What's it like there? Well, it's very difficult for, for people. I mean, I can't really describe the level of, of, of uh, dire poverty and, and difficulty that people are facing. Most of the, most Haitians who can leave have left Haiti a while ago. So what you're saying is that those who are stuck essentially in Haiti, and it's very difficult. Uh, gas has skyrocketed to the point where it's unaffordable for the average person. Food shortage is chronic. And, and you have uh, insecurity, uh, there's gang warfare being waged uh, every day. Uh, I have a relative who lives in Haiti and uh, will tell me every day the hardship that they, they are living under. So Gary, there there is a robust discussion happening uh, in Haiti and even amongst the diaspora about international invention and the possibility of foreign troops on the ground in Haiti. Um, the question, I guess, is, what is that debate and what are people leaning towards? Well, the debate is like, uh, do we need another intervention? Because we've had a few of them in the last decades or so, and they've ended up by all accounts, not very good for Haiti or the international community. And so the question now is what kind of force? I believe that we, something has to be done. I think it has to be a very limited uh, police intervention because and to, to pacify and to dismantle the gangs, eventually set the scene for election so we can come back to, to, to some democratic process. Because right now we are in uncharted territory, like I said. Uh, Gary Pierre Pierre, thank you so much for giving giving us a sense of what's happening in Haiti right now. Thanks for having me. So we're going to continue this conversation. Joining us now for more analysis is Dr. Bertude uh, Albert. She is the CEO of the nonprofit P4H Global. Thank you so much. So let us talk a little bit more about what things are like on the ground. What are the consequences of not having a functioning state? Wonderful. Thank you so much for the question. And as an Haitian American who's dedicating her life to the advancement of the country and who believes that IET will rise, I'm honored to join this conversation with you all, especially with you, Vladimir, who's been a, a Haitian hero of mine. So this, this beautiful question, what is it like on the ground specifically now that the, the senators, we, um, the last 10 senators are, are no longer in their position? The reality of the situation is that Haitians didn't wake up Tuesday morning absolutely shocked at, at, at the vacant position. Uh, this isn't something that rattled Haitians um, because this is something that has been years in the making, de decades in the making. So it truly, there is a deep systemic problem, and this is just a symptom of a much larger problem. So again, um, even me, someone who lives in Cap Haitian, uh, I'm glad that you all are interviewing somebody outside of the capital area because oftentimes they depict it as if everywhere is just like Cap Haitian, just mm. like Port-au-Prince. That just isn't the reality. Um, what's happening with the senators it is uh, deeply alarming and it has weakened our system, but at the same time, it doesn't impact us in the way that the world might think it impacts us. So Dr. Albert, one of the things that I love, and I encourage our viewers to check out your Instagram uh, and your TikTok pages because you do a masterful job 
of giving us context into the situations that Haiti is facing today. You give us historical context. So give us the context that you just mentioned, which is that this has been decades in the making, but more mm. importantly for the people that are experiencing this today, living this every day, what is the impact on just ordinary Haitians? I know that people outside, and you're absolutely right to point out that oftentimes the images that the media shows are of Port-au-Prince and that there's an entire country where some of those things that we're seeing on those images are not happening. But just for those yeah. people who are suffering right now, what is that context and what's it like? Certainly, so I'll go back to the, this great point that you mentioned, Vladimir, the context. In 1804, Haiti gains independence, right? And and we uh, become the first free black republic in the world. We're gaining our independence. Ever since that point, Haiti has been fighting to maintain this independence, specifically when we look at Haiti's political um, and um, uh, social affairs, oftentimes exterior um, uh individuals, exterior um, institutions, the international community plays a, a major role within Haitian affairs. And so even specifically with what, 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 what's happening right now, we see that Haitians are crying out and asking for them themselves for us to be determining the future of Haiti. Um, and so even specifically when we look at um, the situation in the country and we're looking at um, how Haitians are hurting. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat this and say that this is all flowers and and um, butterflies. Oh no, Vladimir, this is this is a threat to democracy in Haiti. This truly is something that is weakening our system. And the daily uh, daily in Haiti, the biggest thing that we're facing is the economic crisis that we're facing with gas prices over 30 U.S. dollars. Many Haitians are trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to feed my children? How am I going to survive? How are we going to move forward with schools being closed for months? How are we going to progress in a in a political situation like this that a lot of Haitians are saying it's partly because we're not able to choose the leaders that are guiding our country? So this is a simple question with not a simple answer. But, you know, is there a way out of this crisis? Vlad asked our previous guest about um, international intervention and how Haitians felt about that. But I think there is also some hesitancy among, um, you know, uh, the U.S., among Canada, because if you go into Haiti, you want to know that there will be a change that you can make that will be permanent, that, that will be lasting. What, what are the elements that will lead this country out of this crisis. And is it a good I mean, idea, I think, doctor? That's the question. question. And these types of questions will bring about a true change in Haiti. What Haiti needs is a Haitian led uh, solution, one that's not being imposed by DC or Ottawa or, or um, Paris. We need a, a solution that is birthed from civil society. And the reality, a lot of people don't know. Civil society in Haiti has gotten together, and they are proposing leadership. They are proposing solutions, but these solutions aren't being listened to. So, again, mm -hmm. you'll hear a lot of reporters that uh, really are close to the ground. You'll hear them repeating over and over, and I'm going to echo the, these cries. Haitians in Haiti want to lead. They want to have a Haitian-led solution that is birthed from civil society. Uh, Bertrand Albert, it's so good to talk to you on the air uh, and to talk about these important issues. And, you know, again, just to reiterate that point, we're showing images of some of the turmoil yeah. uh, as you're talking, uh, doctor. But but the reality is that that's just a small piece of what's happening. It's in the capital city. Um, there are many Haitians in Cap Haitien and other places that are not seeing mm -hmm. the turmoil that we're seeing in the capital. But of course, that's where all the action is, uh, would, would, is, mm -hmm. is in the capital in terms of economic opportunity for most people on the island. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We're going to have you back to continue talking about this. Thank you so much. I appreciate you both.